Hey y'all, new day, new verses. We continue on into Isaiah. Today we're just going to pick up again with one verse, and it's just going to be verse 12 today. And again, it is beautiful imagery, and seriously, just find yourself a, a version of it, CD, uh, YouTube video, stream, whatever, just finding it read out. And if the Lord needs me, I might just read the entire thing out, because there's such beautiful imagery, such beautiful poetry. And just today we're going to talk about how verse 12 and how three connect to each other beautifully, and how that's just even an invitation to see how so many more of them connect, how so many more of them alive. Aligned. So before we get into it, Father God, we just thank you. We thank you for your wisdom, for your strength, for your understanding. We thank you that you shine your face upon us, that you look at us, that you smile upon us, that you call us your own. Heavenly Father, give us the strength to stand. Make us rigid as cedar and supple as reed that we might be anchored firmly to our rock, you, King Jesus, who are our Lord. Unmoving on what you have said as cedars anchored to the earth. And bending without breaking on the things that matter not. Supple as reeds that are unbroken by the storm. For when the wind and the waves crashed upon that house, because it is anchored to you, it is not shaken, and it is not moved. Thank you, God, that you are our peace, our strength, our rock, our refuge, our home. Thank you that you have gathered us under your wing and called us your own. Thank you that you have invited us to your city of peace, O King of Shalom. We praise you and worship you in adoration to your sovereign name and that you see to it all. We praise you and thank you. We call you merciful King. In Jesus' name, amen. Verse 12. Yahweh, you will grant us peace. All we have accomplished is really from you. I know that's such a simple verse, seemingly, and if you go on to the next section, which we'll continue on next week, it gets really, really in-depth into places of of having rulers versus having idols, having a person as the leader versus having something as king of your heart. And we'll get into where rendering unto Caesar gets a lot more interesting. For now, let's just dig into verse 12. And how it connects to verse 3. Verse 3 is this. You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you. All whose thoughts are fixed on you. So you have this beautiful peace. Lord, you will grant us peace. Lord, being the subject of the you in 3, will keep in perfect peace. So granting peace and keeping peace. Giving us the peace. Here it is. You can have it. Receiving it, that's something else. I'll borrow one from a beautiful lady, I know Lisa. She gives this analogy. You can get a gift, but you don't really receive it until you open it and open up the package and open up and pull out the gift and then pull the gift out of the wrapping and actually use the gift. Because it's one thing to be given a beautiful wrapped box. It's another thing to go build the Legos that are in it. Go play with the doll that's in it. Go play with the action figure that's in it. Go read the comic book that's in it. Don't just have it sitting on a shelf, but enjoy it. Well, how does God grant us perfect peace? How does He keep us in perfect peace? Because there's a difference between granting us peace and keeping us in perfect peace. And that beautiful section of verse 12 seems to unlock it all. All we have accomplished is really from you. (laughs) We understand we have the rest of the book of the just from him. It's for him. Paul talking to the servants. You're not living and doing it for your earthly servant. You're doing it for Christ alone. So even if your master is an asshole, you're doing it for your true master in heaven. Even if your boss is a bit of an idiot. Well, remember what we're told. Call somebody an idiot carelessly and you're inches away from hellfire. We pray for these leaders. So even if they are a bit thick sometimes in their choices, 
We're not doing it for them. We're doing it for the Lord, and that's why we do our best. Not be because our boss deserves our best, but because the one who redeemed us does. Abel bringing his best, Cain bringing the rest. Which are we going to do? Because that perfect peace is all who trust in the Lord. It's all who keep their thoughts fixed on Him. When our thoughts are fixed on Him, we realize that what we accomplished is from Him. He gave us the strength to do it. He gave us the breath to do it. He gave us the will to do it. He gave us the unction to do it. He gave us the imagination to do it. It's from Him. So when He gives you that dream about, oh, go build this, it's from Him. And if we're doing it, trusting that He is leading the way, even when that storm comes and blows, and it's howling like a mother out there, and it's green clouds to the point you're like, okay, I'm expecting any ant, a small dog, and a cow any moment here. We are anchored to the rock. We are kept in perfect peace because our thoughts are fixed on the Lord. Our thoughts are not fixed on the moment. Our thoughts are focused on the Lord who is sovereign over all of time. Not just a single moment in which we were in. We trust the one who is king over all of it, provides everything, sees to it. The one who, when we ask him, does not give scorpion or snake, but gives bread and egg. The one that even when they were complaining in the wilderness, well, we had to miss Egypt, we miss quail. You do realize it came with routine beatings, right? But we miss it. You miss the floggings and the meat oh, and the routine prisons. And we miss the figs. What, what about the whole clasps and keeping yourselves chained? We miss the yummy meat. And the death of the firstborn then. But it was so good. You need help, mate. You need help. Even when complaining like that, Israel is still given meat. It was quail till they were coming out of their ears and the people that were running right for it were struck dead because they didn't even bother with a thank you. But they were still given meat. Manna from heaven, water from stone, honey in the rock, miracle upon miracle upon miracle, over and over again. Every act, great act done, done for the Lord. And it isn't interesting the difference between seeing somebody who just does it because, well, it was what was in them to do versus somebody who's actively doing it for the Lord, and you can see the difference. And I'm not talking the piety, I mean the separation. I mean the different way of living. I mean the, well, their family's full of dysfunction and there's more conspiracy theories around them than I know what to shake a stick at. Um, those guys make a Norman Rockwell painting seem butch. Probably going to lean with that side. And it's not even a, a judge on the outside. It's, we don't have the data. But if we're living for Him, it looks different. And if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. Those people that they go through thick and thin, and they're just, no, we're good. You were diagnosed with cancer, and God's going to do something with it. People that I look at and go, wow, <laughs> that is faith. Because it's trusting in who He is. It's fixing our thoughts upon it. It's trusting in who He is. His very character. The a beautiful Exodus character, one of the most repeated in the Bible. Yahweh, Yahweh. Full of generosity and mercy, slow to anger. Compassionate, rich, and unfailing love. Here we go. 34, sorry. <laughs> Yahweh, Yahweh. A God and Lord of compassion and mercy. Slow to anger, filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. And he lavishes unfailing love to the thousands of generations, forgiving iniquity, rebellion, and sin. And I do not excuse the guilty. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children and their grandchildren. The entire family is affected. Even to the third, even children into the third and fourth. And yeah, it is. Because anybody at this point, I'm pretty sure, has come from a family where sin has rocked the foundation of your, your way of doing it. Where sin has laid waste to family, to trust, to hopes, to dreams. 
So in a world filled with that kind of way-laced and, and insanity and needing Xanax and lithium and Valium and Ambien, Lunesta, EIEIO from the pharmaceutical grades, here's some sleep since you don't actually have peace. I don't want peace in a bottle. I want peace in my soul. I want peace that truly is understanding that all we accomplish is from God. And if his strength is what we're doing it from, and his glory is what we're doing it for, and his hand us is on us to the point where every step we take he has given us, then what have we to fear? Going is covered. Coming's taken care of. The left he's put a guard on. The right he's given us flank for. We're covered by our shield of faith. His hand is upon us. He leads our feet. Everything about us is taken uh, covered. And that goes right even back to the first post of this week. Searching within. His Holy Spirit within us and saying, Okay, lead me. You are everywhere. Everywhere. Omniscient, omnipresent, sovereign king. And that last one may be a little hard for people to wrap around, especially if you are from the Marka. But I'm talking an actual decent king. You know, the ones that Americans are like, no, 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 that's the kind of king that we're okay with. <laughs> it's when the presidents and none, Jesus, try and say the K word that we get a little shh Don't do that, by the way. Again, principalities and spirits. You want, your king, you want your president to not be that kind of person? Pray for them. That's it. <laughs> you want your president to be a godly person? Pray for them to be one. Because the power of life and death is in the tongue, and what we loose in heaven is loose on earth, and what we loose on earth is loose in heaven. What we bind on earth is bound in heaven, what we bound on earth is bound in heaven. So if we bind foolishness around our leaders and pray that they would hear the sovereign word of God over every sea and every voice, and we come together where two or more are asked in his name, and the three are united, or a three-chord strand not easily broken, well then suddenly, we're going to see miracles happen. When we start believing that God can, when we start believing that He is our peace because we're trusting in He is who He says He is. Sovereign. That He has the ability to soften the heart or harden the heart. And He is sovereign over time, space, reality, thought, will, function, and form. That is who our God is. This exists by His will. He holds back His breath, all of it. Not just earth, not just our lovely little shade of existence, not just you and me, all of creation, the whole known universe and non-universe, all of it. He holds out his breath, gone. That's who he is. The sovereign creator of time and space, light, life, gravity, function, and form. Everything that science is barely able to measure, he made basically day one. When he said, let there be light. And it was. Is in the Hebrew, the first thing he, one of the first thing he made. The alphabet. He made word and then spoke. And it was. The actions we take start out as an idea. They start out as a spark that we put energy into, time into, nurture, and then we put our hand to. And like a seed planted in the earth. <laughs> David wanting to build the temple. Gathered all those things. Solomon puts it together. It starts with his spark. There's a reason every ancient culture understood creativity was not from them. The Greeks called it the muses. I don't remember what the rest of them called them because I always found the, amu the muses story quite amusing, more amusing admittedly than most of the other ones. Because it talks about what is seemingly fickle creativity for the secular world. We just simply go to the creative one and ask. Lord, I need to know what to write. Okay, you're actually going to write? I'll try. Well, then I'll give you the words. I won't, then I won't. What are we willing to do? 
And are we remembering we're doing it for Him? We're doing it from His strength. We're accomplishing it because He's given the ability to do it. What we accomplish is really from Him. And we're able to accomplish it in peace and in strength and in trust because we let Him lead the way. Like I said the first time we gathered together, that's what it is to be sheep, being led by their shepherd. He's the shepherd. We're the sheep. We're the servants. He's the king. And we're servants that their king, our king loves us enough to call us friend. You want perfect peace? <laughs> you want peace? Ask and he'll grant it. You want perfect peace? Keep your eyes fixed on him and trust that he is who he says he is. But isn't that how all relationships work? Trust. Because where people will fail, God will not. Where people have failed, God did not. So let him lead the way. He'll show you through. As the wind and the wave will come. But if we're anchored to him, the house always stands. I'll see you then.